Hi everyone, welcome to our first video. We have section 1-1 one, one called the real line. We might know this as like the real number line. And we might have graphed on here before. So we're gonna do a little review, and then if this isn't enough review, I'll always link more review videos in the last tab. So you'll see a tab, an optional tab with some more review videos. So we're just gonna review um, inequalities and interval notation so that we can start solving inequalities in this chapter. So we can write the solution set in multiple ways. Um, we call it a solution set when it's in the set notation, and then we also have interval notation. So let's look at some examples. So the first one we have a less than x less than b. So pointing to the left, we call that a less than. If we want to write that in interval notation, in solution set, we're going to do these things called braces. So they're kind of like fancy parentheses. And we read this as x, and then we'll put a big vertical line to read where. It's kind of setting a condition. And then we say where x is in between a and b. So a less than x less than b. And that would be considered a solution set, just a fancy way of writing the solution. Um, in interval, we just write, we use parentheses and say in between a and b. So parentheses, a is my lower limit, B is my upper limit. So it's just telling us it's in between these two numbers. And if we want to go ahead and graph that on the number line, um, A and B are just numbers. We don't quite know where they are, so we'll just label A and B. These could be any numbers. And we'll put an open circle at A and an open circle at B. Um, this is telling me that it's in between A and B, but we're not including A and B. And that has to do with the less than symbol. We'll see the difference in a second. And then we just shade any number in between. So that's a visual of what this represents. So the graph is nice because it's a visual. So then when we add this new symbol, the next one, we have a less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to b. We just add that little line underneath to just tell us that they're also included. So in this case, a and B are included. Solution set looks the same. It says X where, that big vertical line is where, and then the only thing that changes is that or equal. Uh, so to change the interval notation is we're just gonna use this thing called a bracket to include the endpoints. That's how I can tell the difference between parentheses. And then it'll still be lower to upper. So we have these brackets saying A to B. And then the way it changes on the number line, it's still between A and B. And then to tell someone visually that we include the endpoints, we do a closed circle at A and B. And then again, we still shade all the numbers in between. So this is just saying X can be any number that's shaded on that number line. So if this is not review for you, um, or if this is a review for you, sorry, go ahead and pause the video and just maybe finish out this table. Um, I just have a bunch of examples to kind of see how this can go differently. So in the next example, we have a is less than x, which is less than or equal to b. So that means include b, don't include a. So whatever the solution set is, it's anything in between a and b, a is not a solution, but B is a solution. Solution set, you just say X where, X is in that inequality. Uh, in terms of interval notation, we'll use a parentheses for A and a bracket for B. That's telling me again, A is not included, but B is. And then when we go ahead and graph that, it looks almost the same, but since A is not included, A gets an open circle B is included, B gets a closed circle, and X is still anything in between. So we're just shading anything X can be. I'll do the next one a little fast because it's very similar, and then the last one should be a little different. So then A less than or equal to X less than B. Exact opposite right now, A is included, and B is not. So solution set doesn't change. You just say x where, and then you put the inequality. So a less than or equal to x less than b. 
And then the interval notation just switches to the opposite. So we have a bracket for A to include A, comma B, parentheses to not include B. And we'll go ahead and label these. So A is some number, B is some number. We're gonna include A and put a closed circle, not include B, put an open circle, and X can be any number in between. So these are ones where they're in between. And then the remaining ones are not in between. You'll notice X is only one thing. So next example, we have X is greater than A, or we have A is less than X, or X greater than A. We can write it backwards. Those mean the same thing. Set notation, um, we'll say X where, and then if we wanna have two endpoints, we'll just say A is less than X, and then that would be enough, or you could say it goes to infinity. Infinity is just the other endpoint when you don't have it. And the reason I included the infinity is so we can write an interval. So if we're greater than A, that means we just keep going to infinity. So my lower is A and my upper is infinity because it just keeps going. So in terms of the number line, we only have one endpoint. Technically, my other endpoint is infinity, which is on the far, far right. So we'll do an open circle at A, and we'll just keep going to infinity. And we'll use an arrow to indicate that it keeps going, because we never quite reach infinity. Um, for x greater than or equal to A, or A less than or equal to x, everything looks the same. We just change it to a bracket to tell us to include A, and so we'll mark A and we just keep going to infinity. So the only difference on this one is A is a solution. And then we just keep going and going to infinity because infinity is on the positive side. Um, in the next two, I have X is less than B and I have X is less than or equal to B. So in this case, it's anything smaller, smaller numbers. So that means my lower endpoint is actually going to be negative infinity and B will be my upper. So when we write this in interval notation, we'll do negative infinity comma B. And I think the number line helps us visualize it. So we'll mark B, and if we go smaller, that means we go to the left, and that's why negative infinity is my lower. When we include B, the only thing that changes is we shade B. So that just means B is also a solution. So closed circle means that is a solution, open circle means it's an endpoint but not a solution. And then the last thing we might see is called all real numbers. Um, and that's when we go from negative infinity to infinity, so it just means anything's possible. Um, in interval notation, it's negative infinity to infinity. We use parentheses because we never quite reach those two numbers. And on the number line, we just shade the whole number line. It means any number is a solution. So let me know if you have questions. Um, the sooner you get to me, the better, because you'll remember your question. I'll also post more review under the optional review tab. Otherwise, we'll jump into some examples in the next video.